Sometimes I wonder if RVs need more repairs than a typical house does. Sometimes I look at how poorly these things are constructed and I know it for a fact. And then sometimes I go to a friend's house and realize that that needs repairs too. No offense to any of my friends whose house I visited recently that has nothing to do with you. However, I do need to get a bunch of repairs done, so come on along and let's get all this stuff fixed. First up, the screen door. If you've got a screen door and it doesn't slide too well, especially if you have pets, you might need to see this trick. Right in here, these are the wheels. You've got two on the bottom and two on the top. There is a little Phillips head screw in there. And if you pull it out, you might find a surprise. There might just be a whole bunch of dirty pet hair and other stuff in there that you can pull out real easily. And then once that is out of there, my go-to lubricant for something like this, white lithium grease. This happens to be the blaster brand, but brand doesn't matter. It's the white lithium grease part. WD-40 tends to evaporate and you want something that's gonna stick around for a bit. And that's all it takes. Yeah, I'm using power tools, but in case you don't know, these have a variable speed trigger and you don't need to kill them in order to get screws in. And you can see this one here is totally seized up even after I lubed it up a bit. Let's see what's going on. That looks like the wheel is out of the track. I'm gonna put that back in. There we go. Looks good to me. Smooth. I should have shown you a before, but the after is amazing. Number two. It is slightly overcast, partly cloudy here. And this trailer on this campsite, this was supposed to be a spot with some shade according to the campsite map. And let me show you the shade that I'm working with here. Notice there's none behind me. Let me turn the camera around. So there's the front of the trailer and there are no trees around and you can see that the trailer is casting its own shadow down there and what we get for shade is somewhere around i don't know 7 p.m or so the sun goes down behind the hill over here and that little tree is the only shade that we get and it's well past the hottest point of the day so what do you do with something like that it is very hard for the AC in the camper. This camper should actually have two ACs. It only has one, it only has a 30 amp hookup, so I can't even put a second AC in it without doing some crazy stuff. There are some ways I might still do it, but so far we're just gonna stay in colder places because that would be more fun during the summer than being in the south at record highs. It's been record highs here in Iowa. The high yesterday was 99, and that's not the real feel, that's just the high. So. The AC in the camper can only drop you down about 20 degrees on a good day without direct sunlight. And yesterday was not a good day and we had direct sunlight. So what did we do? There is this stuff that you can get from the local hardware store called Reflectix. And it's basically bubble wrap with foil on the front and foil on the back. And these are actually set up inside of the door and the door is still fully functional with the Reflectix up there. And then I put it on every window I could get my hands on except for the kitchen window for some reason. There are two windows, that's the bedroom back there. There are two windows on either side of the bed where, the, where you put your head. And then there is the dinette, and there is the couch, and there is the outside of the office. Don't forget about the skylights in the bathroom. That's my exhaust fan, or the little part for the head to come out in the shower stall. Check out that crazy camera work. It does make it a little bit darker in here, but it is very noticeable. These are the shades that come with the RV. Behind the shade, I have that Reflectix foil. And if you feel this, this is actually cool to the touch. And if you stick your hand back here, you can actually feel the heat as you reach your way in between the Reflectix and the glass. So it ain't pretty, but it works. And that's what really matters. And we're not gonna stay here that long. We got here Monday afternoon and we are leaving Friday morning. And it's, once you get set up, it's kind of a pain to move. And the campsite was booked on Monday, so we couldn't get a better spot for the amount of days that we needed. So when you are looking for a campsite, check out the weather, check out the 
shade coverage of the campsite and check out all the different things that you need to know. For us, we need some amount of shade from the afternoon sun, the hottest part of the day. And then I also need visibility to the north for the Starlink to work in order to get halfway decent internet if the T-Mobile home or the cell phone connection doesn't work. And we've been playing with internet for a while. There are a lot of solutions to that puzzle. So there will be a video on that coming out in the future. Be sure you subscribe to the channel and have that bell rang so you know when that video shows up. Number three, having the bed in the slide is pretty useful. However, that means that there is no nightstand at all over here. It's just a straight shot down to the floor. So I've got a solution for that. Check these things out. You can find just about everything on Amazon and it's hard to see what these things are inside of this bag, but let's get them open. They come as a six pack. It comes with a piece of double-sided foam to stick it to the wall. And what you do with this thing here is pretty neat. It is a cell phone holder. And this is a Samsung Galaxy S24 Ultra. So it's one of the bigger physical sized phones and it goes right in there. And then there is room in the bottom for your charging cable. And when you're done charging it, you can actually hang the cable over the wire. And also what I have found is useful for these is that you can hang your reading glasses on it when you're ready to go to sleep. And then they'll be there for you first thing, right where you left them in the morning. And then again, under the category of Amazon has everything. A lot of you will recognize these things here. These are marine cup holders. And they expand to hold decent sized cups. And when you're done, or it's travel day, fold that down, fold that up, and that's how big it is on the wall. I'm gonna get these installed and show you what they look like installed. All right, there you go. This is the cup holder installed. And then the cell phone holder installed. And they won't interfere with the slide out on this RV. Of course, I mean, they won't interfere if you fold them down on travel day. This one here does screw into the wall, but there's no reason why you can't use command strips to hold that up because it's not gonna hold you know, 30 pounds of weight, it's just gonna hold a water bottle. Number four, blinds for the door. These blinds are fantastic. They've got this big, huge gap between them when it comes to the sliding glass door. And instead we're gonna use a curtain rod and a curtain. Let's get after it. Oh, and here's a reason why I don't like these shades. So this blind roller had already failed a long time ago and lost its, lost its shade, lost its blind. And then this one here is still attached, but the board that it is attached to was screwed into absolutely nothing and was just kind of floating above the door. Fun stuff. They advertise them as being slow risers. You can see it's true. It's very slow to rise. Same company. Very slow to rise. And that curtain rod fits exactly 100% compressed inside of the valance. Finally, I get lucky. And just like that, we have new curtains installed. Might need to be ironed a bit. And they open up from the middle right now. So you can still let the light in when we take the insulation down off the glass. When the summer heat isn't beating on the windows. Of course, there's no reason why they can't go all the way open to one side as well. You do you. This one's not number one or number two, this one's number five. That joke will make more sense after you see the upcoming clip. I feel like I do a lot of filming with you folks in my bathroom, all up in my personal space. Welcome everybody. This is the part where we put a screen door latch on this door here because for some reason camper manufacturers like to make east-west doors on north-south traveling trailers and they, if I don't close it, it bangs against the toilet and if I do close it as the trailer flexes, it opens up and bangs against the toilet anyway. So we're gonna fix that today. You might be able to find these at your local hardware store. I tried looking at my local hardware store. I also tried looking at Walmart and could not find them at all. The person at the local hardware store didn't even know what this thing was. And it's actually very hard to describe it. She thought I was asking about the gas strut that 
makes the door slowly close instead of the thing that holds it closed and keeps it shut. But it is a little spring-loaded thing and it's got wheels on it, so when the door hits the wheels, it closes and holds itself closed, and all you have to do is pull it open. And then you can see whoever was working on this thing before thought that maybe adding some more space to the back side might solve the problem, and bending this out might solve the problem, and loosening the screws might solve the problem. And that's actually kind of dangerous. Luckily, this thing has two doors. There was a time where I couldn't get from one room to the other because that latch was so stuck weird that I had to go out the door, down the trailer, in the back door, and then come in the bathroom from the other side of the trailer. So we're gonna fix both of those problems. So first thing is to fix this door latch. And you can see it's a little bit bent. And so I use this Leatherman on every project of mine. So we'll flatten that back out a little bit. And there you go. Well, that's a nice crooked factory screw. Okay, that's back as messy as it was from the factory. Way to go, boys. And then this is amazing. This is what it's like without the spacer in. Look at that. Way to go, boys. That's supposed to catch. So you get the screen door catch and you get four screws and you only need two screws in the first place. The big fat part here goes on the door frame somewhere and then the catch holds it shut. You know what, I'm gonna put it up really high. Like right about there out of the way. And it has to be far enough in that the inner wheel catches the door. I'll show you when we're done installing it. And the outer wheel holds the door shut. So this front leading edge here, line up with your door frame. Okay, and now, ta-da! And now it holds itself in place even though the door catch doesn't. And since this door doesn't weigh anything, that'll be enough to hold it going down the highway. And I don't need to block it with, what I used to do was put a case of water behind the door to keep the door shut so it didn't hit the toilet or fling around while we were going down the highway. All better. Number six. Remember how I was telling you if you run the water pump and you run off of the fresh tank and you hear that little burp sound, it'll tell you there's a leak? I found one. Luckily, it's on the outside. So right here, this is your low point drain for hot water and for cold water. And you can see that she's a dripping and she's making a mess. So I'm going to try and put some thread tape on it and see if that solves it out. Because I've already tightened that up pretty tight and that didn't help. So step two. All right, now that is all thread taped up. When you're putting thread tape on, make sure you're going in the same direction that the thing that you're screwing on screws in, because otherwise when you screw the thing on, you are unthreading the thread tape, if that makes any sense. So these things are clockwise threads, you put it on clockwise. We'll hope that that solves the problem. Number five, six, seven. Even though I'm running off of the water pump, sometimes I do still hook up to city water just to get some flushing done or to get a quick hand wash or something like that, whatever the case may be, but sometimes you need that. Always, 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 this is like a bonus tip, always use a flow reducer, a flow pressure regulator. I've got a cheap one here and I have a right angle elbow because you're screwing that garden hose, which is usually a metal fitting, into a plastic fitting and the plastic fitting is really hard to replace. So I've got this right angle fitting here that helps me just put it in once and never have to mess with those threads again. So the chances of the brass fitting failing are pretty low and the chances of the plastic fitting that I'm never touching again failing are also pretty low. However, I got a hole that leads into my water supply from the outside. So I got this rubber garden hose plug and it's got a little loop on it that will keep it attached. And I keep it closed 
99.9% of the time because I am running off of my internal water pump and my internal fresh tank for reasons I discussed previously before. I'll give you a hint. It's so I can tell when there's a leak instead of waking up to a puddle of water on the floor in my bathroom, which I've done in my last RV and I don't want to do again. And after you get it out of the box, this is what this thing looks like installed. And it don't get any easier than that, folks. I've got the right angle adapter, the pressure regulator, and the rubber cap. Ain't no critters getting in that hole. Number eight. This comes off of the sliding door to the closet in the back bedroom. And since it is designed that you push that out of the way, they tend to break a little bit. And it was less broken before I did just that, but it was flapping in the breeze. So now we need to get this thing replaced. One Amazon day later, I've got a new door latch. And then it just screws right in. Ta-da! And you're gonna wanna get a case of those things because they're gonna break again. I hope you enjoyed coming along with me on the repair journey of the RV. All of the stuff that I have that I got from the big Amazon store will be linked in the description down below to make it easy for you to find it and to help the channel out a little bit. Every time you buy something, I get a little bit of a taste and you don't have to pay any extra and that keeps me motivated to make some more videos and keep on repairing this thing. If you have any questions about other repairs, I might know something and if not, I might know a guy that knows something. I probably know a guy that knows something. I'm not that smart. I'm sure I will be doing repairs again, so make sure you are subscribed to the channel for those repairs. One of the upcoming repairs is to replace the cheap useless fan in the bathroom with a fantastic fan. They named it fantastic fan so I can get all excited when I say it for you. And that involves making a big hole in the roof and I'm not looking forward to that. So be sure you're subscribed to see all the crying and sobbing I do when I cut a hole in the roof of my RV. That's coming up eventually, but right now it's too hot to even think about having an exterior hole in my RV, let alone being on the roof in the bright sunlight and making a bigger hole in my RV. So while you're waiting for that, there's a video right over here I think you'll enjoy next. I'll see you over there.